glad you're watching this week. You know, this whole month we're talking about procrastination, specifically conquering procrastination. You know, last week I gave a challenge for you to write down 10 things that you know you need to get done, no matter what it is, big or small, but 10 things you know you've been putting off. Cleaning out your closet, returning a phone call, sending a thank you note, whatever it is, just make a list of 10 things. Then schedule time on your calendar over the next 30 days to start tackling one by one. Just get them on the calendar. Well, I received a sweet email from someone in Oklahoma, a sweet lady, and she said how um, she usually doesn't contact ministers and things like that, but she said, um, words can express what our teaching is doing in her life. Thank you, Jesus. She said, you have stripped away all of my excuses. She started listing things that she needed to get done, and she said, I cried like a baby at the thought of completing my list. She said, I just made an appointment for a mammogram. I've been putting it off for three years. Even as I write this, I feel stupid, she says, because it seems like such a stupid thing to share. She said, I'm crying right now. I hope I have the courage to send this because you are such a blessing. Thank you for listening. That is not stupid. That is conquering procrastination. And I'm telling you, Satan is a dream thief and he'll use procrastination to steal the dreams of God, the plan of God, goals you need to pursue. He'll use procrastination as a way of robbing you of those things. Think about it. Just putting off a mammogram. You may think of that as an insignificant little thing, but it could actually prevent breast cancer. So think about the areas that you know you need to conquer in your life. You know, there's a phrase that has stuck with me for quite some time now. It's from Jimmy Lyons, and he said, Tomorrow is the only day in the year that appeals to a lazy man. Ow. Tomorrow, the only day of the year. Well, we get that mentality sometimes, you know, a tomorrow mentality of, well, I'll do the mammogram tomorrow. I'll clean out that closet tomorrow. I'll go to the dentist tomorrow, whatever it is. I'll get life insurance tomorrow. Conquering procrastination will help you fulfill the plan of God for your life. And not only that, it's going to build your confidence from the inside out because you just feel exhilarated when you start checking these things off. You know, there's so many illustrations in the Word of God of procrastination. When you start looking for them, you actually find them. In fact, I did a whole teaching on conquering procrastination, and I was finding story after story in the Word of God of people who kept putting things off. In fact, do you remember the story in John chapter 5 of the guy laying by the pool of Bethesda? You know, it was all these disabled people, handicapped people. They're laying by this pool waiting for the water to stir, and then they would expect an angel to come and put them in the water so they could be healed. Well, in John chapter 5, there's this story of the disabled man laying there, and there was an invalid who had laid there for 38 years. It says, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned he'd been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water stirred. He said, while I'm trying to get in, someone always gets ahead of me. Then Jesus, in his heart of compassion, said to him, get up, pick up your bed, and walk. Then it says, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. Now, when I read that story, my first thought was, why would Jesus need to ask someone who's laying there, obviously handicapped, why would Jesus ask him, do you want to get well? Well, the reason he had to ask that is because nothing had changed in 38 years. He's still laying there just waiting for something to happen when he could have done something. He could have made some kind of movement. Joyce Meyer says he could have squiggled to the edge of the pool, something. But he sat there waiting and waiting and waiting. And so Jesus finally had to say, do you even want to get well? Well, what could Jesus be saying to you? Do you really want to get out of debt? Do you really want to get your health back? Do you want to get in shape? Do you want to see that marriage restored? Do you really want to start that church? Do you want to open that business? How bad do you want your master's degree? Why? Because nothing's changed in five years, 12 years, 38 years. So God could be saying to us, get up, pick up that manuscript and write that book. Get up, pick up that guitar and start playing. Get up, pick up your Bible and start preaching. Get up, pick up your wallet and give. You can give your way out of debt. Get up, pick up your bottom and get to the gym. Whatever it is, we have to stop waiting for other people to come along, 
Stop waiting for other people to believe in you, to believe in your dreams, to tell you you can do it. You know, I always tell people, because a lot of people will tell me that their family, their friends, they think their dreams are crazy, and I have to remind them, keep in mind, whatever God's put in your heart to do, He hasn't necessarily told them what He's told you. So you have to believe in your own dreams. You have to make yourself get up and start taking action towards your future. Quit waiting for other people. God's going to hold you accountable for what He's called you to do, not what He's called someone else to do. So I want to challenge you to think about what that means for you. Listen to what Susan Taylor said. She said, we don't have an eternity to realize our dreams, only the time we are here. So I don't want you to live a life of regret, wishing you had done something last year, wishing you had done something a year from now, wishing you'd done something today. Now, one of the reasons we procrastinate is because we have unclear goals. So perhaps your goals aren't as clear as they need to be. Maybe on January 1st, you wrote as one of your New Year's goals, you're going to save money. Well, that's a pretty broad goal, and it's not specific. And when your goals are unclear, it's doubtful you'll achieve them. So get clear on what you mean. When you say, I'm going to save money this year, what does that mean? Because saving money to you may be different than saving money to me. Are you saying save $5,000, save $500, save $50,000? What does that mean to you? Be specific. If it's $5,000, you still have really 10 months to save that money. Well, that would be what, $500 a month? Saving $500 a month, then that would be a clear goal. I'm going to save $250 from every paycheck. But be specific about the goals because that will help you conquer procrastination so that five years from now, you're not still saying, I'm going to save money, but you're still not saving money. And then another thing is schedule your goal on your calendar. If it is to get the health checkup, schedule it on the calendar. If it is to start saving money, write that on there on the days that you get paid. Deposit money in the savings account. Transfer money to the savings account. Whatever it is, schedule them on your calendar. So I want to remind you, this entire month, we're talking about conquering procrastination. Procrastination simply means the act of putting off or delaying or deferring an action to a later time, to put off intentionally or habitually. And remember, procrastination is a trap of the devil. You don't have another year to waste. So I want to offer you this special free download that we're giving you this whole month. And it's all about 10 tips to find time. Find time for what? For your life. <laughs> to enjoy your life and to pursue your dreams and goals. So just use the code that's on the screen and you can get your free download today. And I want to thank you so much for watching, for supporting us, for writing in. I appreciate you so much. I'll see you next week.